And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Hafid's Grand Bazaar from Rather Dashing Games. Now this is a game in which you're trading around spices and all the different things um, in the Orient, trading around different goods and things. And the uh, folks who made the game told me that there's a lot of games like this. I know, I talk about them all the time. But they said they wanted to turn it on its head and that those games often can feel very slow, methodical, and they wanted something that was more free form um, and kind of crazy and trading and things like that. And that's how this game was made. Let me show you how it plays. Here's the board for the game. It's actually pretty small. You can see my hand takes up almost the whole board. And the game's going to revolve around a set of these cards here. These are the different goods cards. On the back, it shows you what type of good that is. On the front, it shows you exactly what good it is. So this is some paper. There's seven paper in a deck, and it it's, has a value of one. And it's part of the red set. This here is incense. There's four of those in the deck. has a value of two. Uh, the rule book actually shows you the different kinds of goods and a set of all them, but you don't really need to know that to play the game. Each player is going to start with 10 cards in their hand, and they're also going to get six bidding cubes that they're going to be placing on the board. So starting with the, whoever has the first player token and going around, um, players are going to be betting or putting cubes on areas. Now, if they put a cube on the negotiator, they're going to be able to trade. Anyone can put a cube there, and everyone can put a cube there. Same thing with the customers. You can put a cube there, and someone else can put a cube there. No big deal. Um, and on the free trader, there are six spots to put cubes. So if you put a cube in one of those spots, no one else can go there. On the informant and on the six different caravans, if you put a cube on a spot, you are winning that spot. But if someone else puts more cubes, then they are ahead of you. So in any given spot, if someone puts a cube on the informant, I might outbid them by putting three cubes there. Now after everything is done, after everyone's put out their cubes, whoever bid the highest on the informant gets to look at all the cards in one of these groups or all the cards of the same type. And then they draw a card from the draw card or discard pile. Then, starting with the whoever bid here, so let's say Orange put a cube here, Orange is, has the first caravan. They pick any of these, then they can take these two cards in their hand. Ooh, I got a sword and a, and a horse. So they add those to their hand. And each of these, so one, two, three, four, five, six, will each get a group of two cards. Whenever someone claims a card, you can draw the top two cards of the draw pile by getting rid of your cube on a free trader. And if two people want to do it at the same time, whoever has the lower number gets to choose first. Um, and if you lose a bid out here, you still get to draw one card from the draw pile into your hand. After everyone has their cards in their draw pile, you can sell to one of the three, or you could, sorry, trading happens. If you put a cube in negotiator, you can trade with anyone. So if Bob, Susan, and Sally all put a cube there, then they can trade with each other. They can also trade with me, but uh, they can't, I can't trade with Billy because neither he or I put a cube on the negotiator. And then finally, you can sell cards in your hand because you're going to have to discard down to 10. Um, if you put a cube on one of these, you can sell pairs of the same exact good and get double their value. You can sell one of every type of color and you get the, their value plus five. Or you can sell a complete set. That means you have all the goods in that set, one of each good, and you will get 30 no matter what the value of the goods in the set. If you don't do any of those customers, then you can sell up to five to 10, between five and 10 of your goods and simply take the value that is on the top of those cards. Once everyone has had a chance to be the first player, you'll start another round and do the same thing, then you're going to add together your points from these point tokens and whoever has the most is the winner of the game. Okay, so that's how the game plays. Now there's trading in the game and like I said, when they were talking to me about this game, they really sold me on the idea that you could trade anything. You could trade real money. You could trade favors in the future. The rules don't actually say that. You can, but I can imagine a lot of people would not want to do that. They want to keep things in the game. However, there is a pretty hefty trading aspect to this game. 
you really should consider putting a cube on that trading spot so that you can trade with other players. Unless everyone but you does, because then who cares? You don't need to waste one of your cubes. And that I find fascinating. I mean, even if just two people put their cubes there, I can trade with them. And yeah, I can't trade with Margie, but I never really wanted to trade with her anyway. So it's kind of interesting. Or I could do a three-way trade. You know, Margie, I'll give John a card, and then you give John a card, and then, you know, you can do that sort of thing. And the game almost sits on the knife's edge on that regard. Because if you get a group that's not going to trade like that, eh, the game isn't quite as good. And in fact, I think this game really scales well high end. It's best with five and six, and four is good, but not as good as five and six, and three, because eh, there's not as much trading. The trading, and also the out auctioning and outbidding each other for the caravans and stuff. You are literally going to have a plethora of cards. They're handing out... I think five new cards every round and it's easy to get more cards in your hand and you do this, you draw more cards, but you want the right cards. You want those sets of five. I mean, that 30 points, that's nothing to scoff at. Um, doubling points, uh, you, you don't want to just sell cards for the face value. You want to sell to those customers, but to do that, you got to get the cards and so you take cards other people want and you'll find that missing card you need in the trade pile, but to do, in the discard pile, but to do that, you need to bid on the informant and everyone else is bidding on there. So, the bidding isn't, you know, the be-all and all. If someone outbids you, hey, you can at least get a card from the draw pile. And the fact that you can see the backs of the card is really nice. And so you're sitting there saying, okay, I'll give you this for that. And the trading phase can be as fierce as, let's say, Catan. And I really kind of enjoy that about the game. So the game is not that long. It ends right when it's about to. A six-player game is going to be longer because each person is the, player, the first player once. In a two- to three-player, I think each person is the first player twice. But you shouldn't be playing with those player counts anyway. Four, five, or six, this is a fun trading game that, yes, uses the same kind of goods and resources that every other game does, but it does so in a, in a kind of fun way, in a family-style way. It's you, everyone has an embarrassment plethora of riches that they're able to just share with one another, but you're going to want more than just that stuff. You want more, and so you got to be cunning and quick as you put out the, the cubes, which, by the way, cubes are boring, but that's fine, and get those points. And you'll watch as the scores will start out small and then really ramp up as people start selling bigger and bigger sets. Definitely one I recommend you check out. That's Hafid's Grand Bazaar. Dice Tower Judgment approved! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.